Good morning, Hollywood Haven family. This is After Dawn, the show where we sit down to have a cup of coffee with the cast, crew, and creators behind the Hollywood Haven Studios productions. I'm Sol, and I'm running this show stag uh, this week. So I hope you all are ready for that. Uh, so we are going to be talking about the season two finale for Wayfarer, the episode where everyone got together to have hearts to hearts, apologies, uh, revelations that maybe the ways they were doing things weren't the best, talks about what comes after the ritual, and then of course the ritual itself, where they found out that those werewolves that they thought were so far away uh, weren't as far away as they thought. I really enjoyed it. I liked seeing the sort of bits of closure that people got, that the characters got. I liked seeing uh, doors opening for people to change a little bit between seasons. And I also liked seeing the big final fight and seeing that uh, the danger being that high, as it was throughout the season, was entirely accurate, as, as I don't think anyone escaped that fight unscathed, at least a little bit. Uh, but my opinions are not the only ones that matter. I'm joined by the entire cast, including the storyteller today. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 Oh, Lord. Anyway. <laughs> did, we make that, did we make that unlistenable enough for everybody? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so today we are going to have a little bit of a different format. We're going to have a very short brew uh, brewing uh, section and then we're going to go straight into a mix of drinking th our cups and spilling the tea because there's a lot to talk about here and i want to also open up uh question for questions from anyone to anyone else as soon as possible so to start off i would like to go ahead and ask our wonderful cast how have you all enjoyed playing your various characters oh man oh I, I've been oh. given more knives than I initially gave BP at the start of the season. I mean, I gave a few knives and they just kept getting stabbed over and over again and then turned. <laughs> I, had, I, don't know where, I don't know where all these knives came from. I had knives that I didn't think would be used in the way that they were used in that way. I don't know about you guys. Rosanna turned out perfectly stable. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 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 They're yeah. All, all mentally stable and fine. We definitely yep. don't need therapy. Nope, totally. Especially therapy. not Isabel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isabel doesn't need therapy. I don't know what you're talking about. No, she just said Vincent. Expensive. Cursed to need therapy. <laughs> is, that what her her. is that what her levels in curse are? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Uh, but... But overall, I, I quite enjoyed the season. So yeah, you know. it was really good. Wonderful to hear. Uh, what are some of your favorite things of, that your characters uh, did this season that you're most proud of with how their stories went? Let's go ahead and start with Arthur, since he had the most that he needed to get done. Oh, man, there was so much. I, I like legit had no idea how things are going to play out for Arthur. Like, I like just so much going on, so many moving parts. And like, there was just, uh, it was, there was, a, there was a lot, but I did, um, I've said this before, but I'm, I can't remember if I've said it on after dawn or not, but I, I've played in games where like storytellers have like, like, a, you know, they're like, Oh yeah, cool backstory. And then like, they, they never use it. And then if I wanted to use any piece of my backstory or like develop a personal story, I had to do it myself and put effort into it. But then BP went and made like a whole thing about it. And it was like a big part of the season. So, I mean, I do like that there was a, a whole bunch of involvement there and like closure to certain things and new avenues opened up like directions. I wasn't even thinking about when I made Arthur or when we did season one. So, um, yeah, I, I, there was all kinds of stuff. Uh, where do I start? Uh, Katie Lynn, the speaker. I mean, I could go on all day about this stuff. Fair enough. Let's go ahead and go on to our other veteran of Wayfair, uh, Legacy, who played Rosanna. Yeah, I, I mean, the same with, with Rosanna. There are a lot of parts to her backstory, which... um just 
due to the fact that I was last season, I was thrown in such like so last minute, I didn't really have much time to kind of flesh out a full backstory. So I gave BP some key points like, you know, her sister's gone missing. She's got a pen pal that she doesn't know the identity of, except to that his first name is Peter. Um, and like little stuff here and there that I kind of sprinkled throughout. Uh, and a lot of my character's backstory was built through like the aspect of role play. Um, so the fact that she made note of some of the stuff that I that I brought up um, and used it uh, against me um, um, was it, it, it was really cool. Um, now I've got some I've got some moving parts and things that I'm going to use to kind of like build her up and tear her down and then build her up again. And um, it was it was exciting to see some. Some things that I wasn't expecting about my character to come into play um, there. I was definitely thrown for a loop a couple of times, um, especially like the stuff that I kind of sort of made a note on um, being twisted in a way that I didn't think it would be twisted. So it was really cool. <laughs> ah, that's okay. <laughs> she thinks she's so funny. <laughs> I'm in danger. I mean, that just means that the rest of you have to worry about your characters' backstories coming up as main parts of the show in the next seasons. Womp womp. Womp womp. Womp womp. Right. Like we haven't referenced their backstories at all yet. Well, smidgens like, here. Like I, there. Ha- um. like I haven't laid groundwork for things to come up later. <laughs> no, never. Nothing's gonna come Not up at all. all. It'll be fine. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah. I still want to hear Termite and Aubrey's answers. I yeah, do let's too. go ahead and get a, let's go ahead and get an answer from uh, Termite since Termite spoke about danger. Uh, hold on, I have to do something real quick. How dare you? Okay, Aubrey. <laughs> yeah, um, it's very interesting coming into a, an established show like this in like a second season. Um, you know, uh, you kind of feel like a lot of character establishing stuff is done in the first season. So it's like trying to strike that balance of, hi, I don't want to info dump my backstory or who I am. Uh, but, you know, I want to be at least interesting uh, first, like when I show up. So uh, Isabel started it's just the. Where Isabel started and where Isabel ended, I feel like, are very different. Uh, and that's mm-hmm. a thing I think will probably come out next season. Um, Isabel's goals go- starting the season were so different than at the end. And it's not even because of the curse. It's just because of what she's experienced and what she's learned and the experiences she's had. Um, the, the meeting with Vincent, I think, really changed something in her. Yeah, it's called a curse. I mean, it's it's that, but it's like true. just just that that whole thing kind of just made her th- start thinking about things in a very specific light. And I'm very interested to see where it goes, um, you know, uh, probably lean on a little bit more of we need more combat. We need more combat focused. Uh, so I'm going to try to like up that uh, Isabel will, uh, I guess, get some military training or something because, you know, I've got two military trained partners, so. <laughs> I get some from them. Well, and you're already getting some from them. Military is an interesting way to put that. <laughs> um, is that what yeah, we're no. calling it now? Yeah, maybe what we're calling it now. And then just like <laughs> Isabel, uh, Isabel, it's, it's hilarious because in my notes and everything I'd written before, it was like going into this was still very hung up on like an ex that they'd broken up with like six months ago. And I was actually making roles occasionally just to be like, does she cave and call this person? Uh, because it, it, you know, it doesn't like wants to hear that comforting voice that has no connections to monster hunting or monsters. And but it's not going to be a comforting voice because their relationship didn't end well. So is, do I make the the horrible decision to call my ex who we had a messy breakup. Always love a messy breakup. Mm-hmm. And now termite, you can't escape now. Uh, I'm sorry. I had medicine. I had to take, but I'm dumb. and didn't take it this morning. Um, 
Uh, let me tell you, I wasn't I wasn't expecting to have Piper uh, on screen uh, coping with the inevitable death that she was probably going to walk into because that's just what a hunter's life is. Mm -hmm. Um, let me tell you that that message that I had set to uh, to go uh, was not something that uh, in my planning was something that I ever thought would even remotely come up. Um, and then, you know, BP, uh, taking the knives that I gave her, um, and then gluing two of them together to stab me with them at the same goddamn time. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. Never. <laughs> um, because God forbid, I assumed that the enemy was going to come after me directly, but no, <laughs> no, of course not. Why would they do that? <laughs> Yeah, going after you is too easy. <laughs> You're squishy. That's what the robots are for. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I, I definitely think there was there was a lot of there was a lot of character development that I didn't anticipate because uh, I am also used to uh, having backstories that just kind of don't get referenced. And just kind of yeah. exist as nebulous ent entities, mm -hmm. um, uh, but then suddenly things are being thrown at me, and I'm like, "Wait, I wrote this! Fuck!" <laughs> yeah, yeah. You did this to yourself. I did this to myself. Mm -hmm. I made this. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can't believe you've done this. She says yeah. as she looks in the mirror. Right. <laughs> exactly. I can't believe I've done this. So, BP. Yes. Have a very important and very difficult question to ask you up front. Is it favorite what the character. fuck? Well, oh, that, I, figured the, I figured the others are going to ask what the fuck. I got to ask your favorite character. Oh, uh, okay. I, uh, I can't answer that because, like, there's different situations, right? There's, like, different flavors for different days. Um, uh... Arthur is my favorite character to uh, shake really hard and go, why are you like this? Um, and to to punish with his character flaws. <laughs> um, uh, Piper is the most like me as a person. So um, we should we should unpack that. We should yeah, definitely not. Up. We should definitely <laughs> not unpack that. Oh, no, it's a lot of it. About that. <laughs> a lot of How it is just the have? fact that a lot of it is just the fact that like Piper's problem solving is very similar to to how I imagine my problem solving would be. Um. Uh, I I vastly prefer to outthink the problem, um, than to like confront it directly. Um. At least until I have like every bit, like bit of information I possibly can. Um, Rosanna is my favorite character to make cry. Legacy, I'm so sorry. Um, I just I I love setting up these super, like these these hypercharged emotional scenes for Rosanna. Um, because she's got, um. It might be because I had so little of like an established backstory for her that I was just like, OK, cool. So I get to like play in these really wide margins um, and and just completely go ham with this. I have very little in the way of like lines that I have to color inside of for her. Um, and Isabel, honest to God, is is the kind of character that I should want to be my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just adore spooky goth spooky goth uh, medical girls. Um weirdly. Uh nah, it's not weird. I mean we it's weirdly specific that that's like the flavor of spooky goth girl I, I tend to favor is like the, the nerdy spooky goth girl. Um Can you tell how surprised I am by this? Yeah, I am Jack's <laughs> little lack yes. of surprise. I cannot wow. believe it. Um, so I like, I love all of the characters, but I love them all for very different reasons. Um, 
if if we're talking about like as a person, Arthur's at like the bottom of the list for me. What? Love Arthur as a character. <laughs> Love Arthur as a character. Hate him as a person. Hate him as a human being. We just got to take a dunk on him one more time. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Listen, most of this season was dedicated to Arthur and his character yep. flaws. Um, and I'm hoping that he will come out of season two as a better person. I'm hoping. You know, um, I, think, I think there was potential for that until uh, the people that uh, we thought we could trust. Um, not even talking about Loki, because we knew he was going to fucking trust him. Oh, yeah. The no. fucking werewolves. Speak for yourself. Well, Isabel never trusted them. I was going to say, like, actually, Arthur never trusted Jesse. It's it's like established that he was leery of him every single time we interacted. Yeah, I mean, Piper just doesn't trust anybody. Listen, all I can say is that if if we, if y'all come, if Arthur comes away from this season with the message being I was right all along, I should be more paranoid then he totally missed the fucking. Nah, nah. That's so very much the point that Arthur would get from what happens. <laughs> it also is. It also is. I have to consider that really hard. Wayfair season two, uh, Wayfair season three. Uh, Arthur's going to learn today. <laughs> It's not even a new season, it's just season two part listen, two. Listen, if season two didn't didn't teach Arthur that he is unteachable and we just need to accept that eventually he's not going to be a PC anymore because he's just going to go so far that he's going to have to be an SPC and Scott's going to have to come up with something new. <laughs> I mean, I already Arthur, had like a, an alternate plan of Arthur's villain arc. Arthur after for season quick... four main villain? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Arthur, wait for a season four. The 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 cell gings up to bully Arthur again. <laughs> Great. So how is this different from the last three seasons? <laughs> Arthur's gonna do what uh, hunters in the vigil do, where they just if they go nuts, so they become like uh, horror movie slashers. Yep. Oh lord. Uh, now I got the same question to the rest of you. Who's your favorite character? You can't say yourself. Uh, Aubrey. Um, I'm gonna go with Gozer. That's fair. Gozer is an NPC, fair. not a character. Okay. Do you, are we are we saying other other player characters? Yes, PCs. Okay, the SPCs don't count either. Nope. Okay. Then, yeah, I I would say Rosanna is probably my favorite uh, PC because Rosanna is very much like a, a kind of a character that I would play. I've played characters like Rosanna before, um, and Legacy just does it so well. Aww. Aww. Legacy, you next. Uh, in in kind, I actually was going to say Isabel is one of my favorite PCs. Um, strictly because, um, the, the, I, I loved the dynamic that they had going for them there for a little bit where Rosanna and Isabel were into the same things, uh, but going about it in weirdly different ways. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, you know, both obsessed with death. Yes, I... queen. Uh. <laughs> But oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry. Um, and and um, <laughs> oddly enough, uh, Aubrey plays the type of characters that I actually typically like to play and does it phenomenally. Thank you. I was going to say, I was going to say, I actually like Piper because Piper has this like dark history that I find very intriguing and can do all kinds of cool tech stuff. I think like. If I had gone a different direction, I absolutely would have gone with like the drones and things. So I think I, I like Piper. I think Piper's cool. And then Piper's also like, yeah, dude, get a clue, you son of a bitch, like constantly. <laughs> <laughs> and like, it's funny because internally, like I, I make the conscious choice to have Arthur be like oblivious and stuff. And it's fun to watch because I'm like in my head going, like, oh, God, dude, get a clue. Um, So I love it a lot. Uh, I don't know what you mean by uh, dark history. There's nothing going on at all. It's fine. <laughs> um, uh, in a complete <laughs> a move that completely surprises everybody. Um, though I hate him as a person. 
Oh. <laughs> uh, Arthur, um, Scout just does such a good job of playing him. He does. Mm-hmm. And um, kind of similar to what Legacy was saying about Rosanna and Isabel, um, there are a lot of parallels between Piper and Arthur. Um, but they go about things in such drastically different ways mm. uh, that it's very interesting to see, uh, especially when they butt heads constantly <laughs> over and over. <laughs> <laughs> Because they really do have a lot of very similar, like, ideals. But their ways of defending them are so drastically different. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, we are going to get on to the main event, the drinking the cups and the spilling of the tea. Uh... So, I'm going to start us off with uh, a question to BP. Yes. So, uh, since Loki isn't in the same reality as the Hunters anymore, and at least some of the werewolves are taken care of, uh, can you tell us anything about what they might have been doing when they weren't on screen, or are you going to keep that to yourself? Oh, I'm keeping that to myself. I figured I had to ask, though. You asked the same, uh, y'all asked the same thing during apotheosis and you got the same answer. No, I'm not going to tell you, not going to tell you nothing about my, what my bad guys are doing when you can't see them. If I wanted you to see it, you'd have seen it. You're mean. Nah. (laughs) That's the real reason that BP handed off me being the, handed being the bad guy off to me because she doesn't know what's going on in my head 90% of the time when I'm playing Gwen. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not sure not that you know what's I. going on in your head. <laughs> Changes moment by moment. Correct. <laughs> Solomon, I got a question for you, buddy. Oh boy, hit me with it. I had a question for you. Did did since since I know some people knew about the true natures of Jesse and Briggs, did you know about that beforehand? And this is more this is a two part question. If not, how does it make you feel now knowing that there was a big-ass threat lurking in the shadow when you were playing Vincent on the show? Okay, I knew that Briggs was a werewolf because Grizz had let that slip when we were talking about uh, him playing a werewolf in uh, Bed of Roses. And he's just like, yeah, I'm playing a werewolf in this and a werewolf on Wayfair. I'm like, you're playing a werewolf on Wayfair? He's like, oh, shit. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I did not Things know hurt. about I did not know about Jesse being a werewolf. That part, that one surprised me. I was like, okay, so it's bad enough that there was one werewolf. I was already puckering, but then second, but then there was a second werewolf. I was like, mm, no, uh, uh-uh. uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wondered. I wondered if you knew, and then after the reveal, if it was like, oh my god, I was that was a dangerous situation. Yeah, I mean, it was a bad enough situation, but the, but the thing is, uh. <laughs> I, I'm very glad that I didn't have to really take it into consideration for how Vincent handle things handles things because he already was like, I don't want to get into any fights around here. Any fights that, that result in people di- my people dying or me or uh, me dying is bad. So, yeah. But yeah, uh, it, it was uh, even more horrifying as soon as Jesse transformed. I was like, oh, shit. Speak, speaking of the antagonists and the SPCs, what did everyone think of the various uh, SPCs and bad guys through the season? I want to fucking murder Rosanna's sister. I mean, I, yeah. I, 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 I thought you were I, just going to stop that as I, I want to fucking murder Rosanna's. I'm like, I, the player. <laughs> I mean, same. <laughs> Yeah, that bit was that bit was that was the way it was intense. I don't know how to describe it any differently. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I've got mixed feelings about my about Rosanna's twin. <laughs> I can't imagine why. Yeah, no, not 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 a not a clue. Um, I I like that she is a problem that the cell is going to have to deal with in the future. Um, I, I I do like that we didn't rush directly into that situation. Um, 
Um, I, I do have to say, though, one of my uh, one of my favorite and it, it sucks that we didn't get more of him. But I had to say one of my one of my favorite antagonists had to have been Gunshot. Yeah. 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 I, I he wasn't even that. an antagonist. He he just he was just he was an just NPC an that you guys met. I mean, he was antagonistic towards Arthur. He yeah. was he antagonistic. Because Arthur was antagonistic. That was because uh, yeah. I was just like, you can't you can't put that in. You can't put that in. Listen, if anyone is compared to Bobby, if anyone is, if we compare everyone as antagonistic in their comparison to how they are antagonistic to Arthur, that's not fair for everybody, okay? At that point, Gozer's an antagonist. <laughs> exactly my point. Exactly. Jeez. Um, yeah. he, he came in, he came in um, at the very least as a neutral party, potentially an ally, and Arthur was just kind of an asshole to him the whole time. So, of course, he was a little antagonistic back. So fucking funny. Uh, overthinker's portrayal of Loki is yes. uh, everything. Oh, right? my God. It's I can't incredible. Just, oh, fucking God. wait until apotheosis. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that was what, what I was going to say is like, there were some cool SBCs. Um, I mean, we all love, we all loved Jesse until we had to kill him. Mm-hmm. Um, but like overthinkers, uh, Loki was amazing. Like, it, you know, especially for like me having to think about like dealing with him. It was just like, there were just so many good things about the way he portrayed Loki. It was so, I, I liked it. It was great. Um, I really like Cricket. They're not an antagonist, admittedly, but um, no. but I mean, Cricket I was probably season here. So yeah, mm. Cricket was probably one of my favorite um SPCs. Mm-hmm. Cricket was um, great. I just adore uh everything about the paranoid conspiracy theorist hacker guy. Just amazing. Mm. It was very good. Nika mm-hmm. did a really good job. Yeah, yeah, they. Uh-oh. Did PP die? Oh, no, no, I'm here. Okay. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I didn't go anywhere. Your, your mic went you robot all robot. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, um, my favorite antagonist was Discord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Discord, Discord is a recur- Discord is a recurring villain in my games. Discord is like, oh, no, you think everybody's going to be online? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just gonna you drop people the, halfway through. It's fine. You need these cameras to be like on all the time. Good you luck with these, that. You need these cameras. You need people to be able to hear you. Um, my favorite thing was during the first episode of Wayfair. Everybody had to at one point or another. Um, everybody's Discord crash at least crash. once. Yep. 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 Didn't mine crash so bad it took my whole fucking computer out for for a couple of yeah, minutes? Yeah, sure yeah. did. <laughs> I was like, "What the hell, it man?" Mm-hmm. Nani the fuck. Um. Yeah. I love Jesse, and I'm I'm gonna miss him. <laughs> it's just yeah. I I I had second thoughts a couple of times about about what I was planning, but I was just like, no, I committed to this two seasons ago. It's got to happen. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was actually going to ask about that. Like, how long would I, had he been planned to be a werewolf? Like, you monster. No, from the beginning, he was always a werewolf. You mm-hmm. are a monster. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, you wonder why one. I stab you in the soul when it comes to Witcher. <laughs> <laughs> Needs to be karma. Yep. I I loved it. Um, so I was originally supposed to be an SPC. I was supposed to be what Cricket is. Um, mm-hmm. and um, and this was back when they had Damien in the cast. And so I got to learn firsthand what Jesse was. So having to, there were so many things that I had to like keep hush hush about that I was like trying to like rack my brain around. Okay, how can I feed into this? Um, and just caught and just like stir the pot just ever so slightly uh, without giving without it being a dead giveaway that I know what's going on. Um. 
But so, like Gary, Gary plays the most like lovable characters, no matter what. Like even when he's playing assholes and stuff, mm-hmm. he's, Jesse is the still most like pathetic little piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the scene on the phone will live in my head rent my free for favorite the rest fucking of my scene. Life. <laughs> yeah, and even better cry? for those of us. I'll cry. Because I'll cry. Even even better for those of us that could see him because he was acting it out on mm-hmm. the camera, but yeah, like, the audience could see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite lost. bits was uh when me him and grizz were all just saying no put the danger up let it go up <laughs> overreach <laughs> overreach <laughs> yeah that that danger tent's not going to come around at some point no no oh, there'll never be any consequences no there's not going to be like government suits showing up at the compound the next day and isabel just being like <laughs> no <laughs> the irs <laughs> Oh no. Nothing is scarier than the IRS. <laughs> Look, Isabel may have to take that second inquisition job just to get the heat off our backs. Oh. <laughs> mm. Call from Allison. Mm. Why was the Aurora Borealis over Mississippi last night? Good question. <laughs> and why did like half the fields burn down? Don't worry just about it. We were in Louisiana. Just say, uh, I don't know, Loki bought the farm, I guess. <laughs> I hate. Also, I'm still <laughs> so fucking proud of that that pun. I, wish I can't. It was so good. Um, but you know, speaking of other SPCs, uh, Clara coming in as Katie Lynn, right? Oh my God. Came in fucking clutch because she okay. had less time to prepare than any other SPC did. Because I, she didn't apply. I, I went and found her. I reached out to V over at, over at Queen's Court and was just like, hey. Who do you know that would be good for this? And there was a small part of me that was hoping that that Claire or that V would would um, volunteer. But she was just like, oh, go talk to Claire. And I was like, OK. And Claire was amazing. So good. Mm-hmm. So, so, good. so good. Yeah. She was wonderful. Uh, I, I like sure we had Katie Lynn energy earlier from BP, but Clara's like stepping it up to 11 was just. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was beautiful. I was like, oh, yeah. man, I made this NPC, but they have a whole nother life now. Like, I don't know. I don't know anything. It's great. Honestly, honestly, the 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 best part about it for me was um, or I, I want to say the hardest part about it for me, uh, having having her come in to play Clara was that uh, or Katie Lynn was that um, Clara didn't want to take control like she, like she, like there was a con there was at least two check-ins a week for a while where she was just like are you sure okay but i'm thinking about i'm thinking this what do you think and i'm like baby she's your character now i gave you all of the background that i had i gave you like the clips where i played her she's yours you get to make these decisions and i will work with whatever you give me trust me if you come up with something that's going to break anything i'll let you know and it was still like, no, you can calm down. It's OK. <laughs> it's, it's OK. You can play Relax. the character. It's OK. <laughs> you're not going to you're not going to ruin my game. Yeah, she um, she checked in with me a couple of times and, and there was a there was like things where I'm like, don't tell me. Just do. Just do. We'll have fun. We'll see how it goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's basically I mean, I wanted to know what she had planned, but that's mostly so that I can like make sure yeah. that I'm prepared um but like i i flat out told her i was like i'm i'm very rarely gonna tell you no mm-hmm. but that's not my gm style my gm style is 100 percent yes and mm-hmm. yeah she was well okay 99 percent yes and same yeah because because i do have to step in and i did have to step in and nudge overthink for a few times when he tried to like put these big like dramatic things in play and i'm like you would have need to have been here for season one for any of this to work <laughs> i like, think i would have had to have prepared for this 20 sessions ago yeah we laid groundwork here my friend and we haven't laid any of that groundwork exactly so i'm curious to know what everyone's like greatest moment that they as players wanted to hit arthur or as the as the storyteller so so at at what point did we want to punch arthur yes the most the most the The most most. (laughs) specifically the most got it 
Uh, for me, it was definitely the first time that uh, Rosanna summoned Tuafla. Mm. Mm-hmm. A whole uh, whole conversation where it's like all of these things that we were hiding from you. Oh yeah, the body's gone now. You're cursed and. She like I didn't know this was a possibility. I didn't know there were other people looking for this body. That you too. know, I was working on puzzles in the back, and you may kind of made the decision without me. Mm-hmm. Fair. This is the, that's what Isabel was doing. She was hyper focusing on puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was like, looks up. We're not in the parking lot anymore. What We're happened? not in Kansas anymore, Toto. <laughs> <laughs> womp womp. Uh, for me, it was the discussion after the um, visit with Vincent mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in the uh, in, in the RV with all of us. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, ex- I expected that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, for me, it was when he marched out of the RV and told the boys from the MC about everything. They were going to find out anyway. Um, most likely, but he completely made sure that they had no opportunity to be able to like walk away from this and come up with some weird explanation for everything so that they could have they could go back to a semi normal life. I was like, oh, these poor babies. <laughs> I was just like, well, OK. <laughs> Guess I'm making hunter sheets for three uh, ex military and mercenary guys. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Ooh. I Not was, just I was SBC curious. stat blocks, full on hunter sheets now. Thanks, Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> you schmuck. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Uh, no, I I love it because I just um you know sometimes I wonder if I'm if I'm doing Arthur right. And since everyone has a time when they want to punch Arthur, I'm doing Arthur right. Well, what's your time that you wanted to punch Arthur? <laughs> oh man, I punch Arthur all the time. Um, <laughs> he just keeps getting time. back up. <laughs> yeah, I no, could do this I'm... all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, there's a couple of times. There's a few times. Uh, the time that he, uh, like was thinking that, like when Rosanna was talking to him, and he's like thinking that she was uh gonna kill someone, right? Like, bro. <laughs> Dude. My <laughs> guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that I was one like, was no. really funny. Like he's dedicated to this thought process right now, so I'm going with it. But yeah, I was like, uh, uh, all right, he's gonna go for it though. That was one. Uh, but I, I do punch him all the time. It, it, like his journals are full of me being like like just going as dark as possible in his thought process. And then like me as a person going like, Ooh, gosh, this guy has trouble. He needs therapy. <laughs> so much <laughs> therapy. Problem is, is he'd never go, which is why, you know, the therapy yep. curse didn't really apply to him. Nope. <laughs> nah, it, it would have. Um, I, I had things planned if, if he'd gotten smacked by it, but he didn't. So, well, now that you bring that up, uh, care to share what your plans were for everybody that didn't get affected by the curse? Um, I'm trying to remember because I know that this is a topic that got asked about in in another After Dawn. Yeah, in the After Dawn, um, yeah. I do, listened did to I one. answer the question in that After Dawn? I believe you had answered the question for Arthur, but I don't believe you yeah. asked the question for anyone else. Yeah, because there was um, a question. The question was like, well, who did you intend for that to go to? And then you said, Arthur. right. And, and it was supposed yeah. to be Arthur. So Arthur yeah. was going to get smacked um, with uh, he was going to see a combination of things. He was going to everybody that he saw was either going to have been uh, they were going to have the look that they had been ascended by the speaker. Um, or we're going to be walking around strapped with like C4 and explosive and other explosives. Um, because Arthur has very particular PTSD after the after mm-hmm. how they lost Jillian. Mm-hmm. Um, I will not, however, uh, say anything about anyone else's mm. because y'all's backstories have not been addressed yet. Mm. Mm-hmm. Great, Fantastic. Chris might come back. 
let let's Chris just Tupin. say let's just say if the players are curious think about the things that your character is most traumatized by in their life oh i think i fucking know and uh th that'll at least point you in a direction even if it's not the right one it's oh, fine i'm sure it's right. fine I, I have an idea. I know what mine would have been. I think I have a pretty solid idea of what mine would have been. Mm. I already know what mine was. No, really, yeah. I can't imagine how. <laughs> what was yours? Really? yours? <laughs> wow. Hey, I would like to know what everybody's favorite moments moment was. Oh yeah, I was gonna from, ask something from similar. the season. Yeah, what was your biggest like fist bump yes moment like? Oh, I was just going to say moment in general doesn't necessarily yeah. have to be a yes moment. It, it could have been like the worst moment possible for your character if that's what you liked. God, yeah, no, I, I absolutely do love like just the like, I guess it's the, it's the. Um, the moment where Isabel sort of flipped on this whole kindred thing. Of you know that that kind of moment where there, maybe there was stuff that was bothering her before. I think it's like th that scene that she had with Vincent and that conversation and realizing that Vincent is yes is a kindred is undead yes drinks blood still a person uh, and that sort of realization in her mind. Uh, made her think about so many things. Think about all the things she did. Um, you know, the kind of, she's hunted with the SI, uh, and uh, you know, people connected to her. And it's it, it, it's like my um, my journal entry was very interesting that week. God, now I wish I had access to those. Well, yeah, well, you'll have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> Legacy. Um, I'm I'm thinking. Um, uh, uh, this is not a good moment for Rosanna, but I thought it was an extremely powerful moment for her. Um, and it was when she came to the realization that um her family that she she grew up in like under like a lineage of like technically like Inquisition members and like hunters and stuff who. Um, instead of just killing off this, this changeling, um, bound her to their bloodline and like realizing that what she thought was her, like finally feeling like something was hers and just hers. She not only has to share with her sister, but her sister is an active like thorn in her side. <laughs> I, I, yeah, um, my journal entry after that was, I think it made BP cry. It was a lot. <laughs> All I saw in my journal after that discovery of uh, of her of uh, I won't I won't go into full detail of the um of the journal, but BP end up having to read it out loud. <laughs> to like the other people who were in our voice chat because it like it, it was a lot to, for her to process just like for Rosanna to process like getting hit on three or four different sides and then uh falling into like a <laughs> trauma coma <laughs> trauma coma where she somehow got traumatized even more yep yeah yeah trauma trauma everywhere I heard mm -hmm. you like trauma, so we gave you some trauma so you can trauma while you trauma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm a beacon of BP's abuse. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. My I mean, my my own personal trauma puppets. That's what my players are. <laughs> Woo. Oh boy. Uh, so this was a let me understand the question one more time because I have like so many thoughts in my head. Your favorite moment. Uh, during favorite, the season favorite moment okay so that's the problem that's what i thought the question was i have way too many uh for it to be one moment um let's see i really actually 
like as me liked the the thing when Rosanna summoned the uh fey lady for the first time that was a cool scene I know Arthur acted like a dick like he normally does but I was like super enjoying that whole bit and the chains and the whole thing was just super cool that was I like that a lot um and then uh, I guess I'll just throw out there every single moment that like we had Clara and the uh, and Overthinker on the screen at the same time. Those were just amazing scenes all over the place. Her mic. Um. Oh, was it episode eight? Yeah, episode eight. The phone call. Um, before the interaction with Vincent. Where Piper was like, oh god, I think I'm gonna fucking die. Um, mm-hmm. and, and her first thought wasn't like, well, can't I just, like, not do this? It was, well, if it's gonna happen, then I, I need to talk to somebody first. Um, and BP's, like, the fucking bottle of perfume. Um, like, that moment specifically is, I think, my favorite part. Aside from Jesse crying, trying to cry in the grocery store, but <laughs> it's a very different kind of thing. Um, I think that was my favorite part of everything. It's all in the same question. Oh Lord! Uh... Oh God! Um, I mean, funniest thing was Jesse crying at a grocery store. <laughs> but uh I think my actual favorite moment I do think it was actually I have to agree with Isabel. It was the con it was the seeing Isabel maybe like take a step back. Like the conversation that they had after they got back to the compound after the conversation with Vincent is just seeing like maybe there's a little bit of change elsewhere. And even like seeing in the episode after that, Arthur being like, you know. Maybe I'm not right all the time. <laughs> and then, of yeah. course, that maybe that might have gotten uh, shellacked by the fact that two hunters that were close to them uh, were werewolves. But, you know, maybe it didn't. We'll have to see. We will have to see, <laughs> won't we? I mean, I, I know. Say, <laughs> uh, another one of my favorite moments was episode one, the grocery store scene. <laughs> <laughs> it's ground meat those are cheerios <laughs> you want cheerios <laughs> you want cheerios uh arthur that's hamburger yeah <laughs> i i was oops sorry go ahead. no 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 you go i was gonna say there was that that bit and i'm still proud of it that bit where i was talking with uh, uh overthinker on the porch with Arthur and overthink we're talking and I just off the dome, like turned his words around against him. I, that just, I came up with that out of nowhere and it just felt good. I loved that part, but that wasn't one of my favorite things. That was just a fun thing that I did. I don't have a favorite, but I, I wrote a lot of what happened. So <laughs> <laughs> I liked all of it. Um, no, actually, that's not that's not entirely true. My favorite um, episode in general was actually like the least stressful episode. Um, it was the morning after episode uh, where Isabel had gotten to slut it up with a couple of the guys in mm-hmm. the hot tub and, and Rosanna had gotten her cuddle on. And it was, you know, just all the awkwardness and, and hilarity the next morning. It was a good um breather it felt like from just the the constant constant horror and and high high tension shit i'd been throwing at them all season fair Uh, enough okay i i have a question uh because i'm curious to know what everyone's thoughts are is it a good or bad thing that katie lynn now knows about monstrous Oh, it's a terrible thing that Katie Awful. knows about Mills. Oh, it's fucking terrible. Atrocious. Fucking Arth- terrible. Arth- Arthur's a fucking moron for having told her. <laughs> 110%. <laughs> Damage done. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember the night that um, uh, 
the 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 night uh the, after the episode where um Rosanna had asked uh, Arthur out to dinner and um and we sat down afterwards just like in our normal like sweat like sweatshirts and like 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 kind of like winding down from the night and we had talked about what they had talked about um while they were at dinner uh -huh. um and then i remember thinking to myself if he tells her that's gonna end so badly one way or another <laughs> um and then we had to have the conversation in character and then you and then arthur decided to tell her out of i assume anger or frustration or uh needing to get it off his chest and the entire time I'm sitting here and I'm I'm like I'm I have my hands just kind of clasped together and I'm like, yep. He had and to tell so her because he end. had to tell her because Claire is incredibly good at at playing Katie Lynn and calling Arthur on his shit. And she just <laughs> sort of systema systematically Truth. dismantled all of his arguments. Yep. Truth. Yep. I mean, it's it's kind of it that scene was um interesting for me because I actually am pretty like I don't hide things and pretty honest about stuff and so i'm like trying to be arthur and she was just tearing down my defenses i was like if maybe i was actually arthur i might have survived this but not me playing arthur with clara just just destroying everything yeah no can't do it it's just gonna happen i actually have a question for aubrey yeah uh, is Isabel going to keep in contact with Vincent? Yes, I think so. Uh, now that things have settled down and uh, once, you know, the, the dust has settled and everything, she's going to contact Vincent at some point. Um, try to learn a little bit more about uh, everything that happened. Um, you know, open up that conversation and see where it goes. Hmm. I also have a question for Aubrey. Mm -hmm. uh, knowing from that first conversation where Arthur revealed some stuff about Rosanna and that he might have to kill her, that was something he kind of mentioned. And you were all like, no, does, does, do you think that Isabel's like her mediumship makes her think about that at all with Arthur? Or has uh, that never even occurred to you? It hasn't occurred to me yet, but it's definitely something I will think be thinking about going into next season. Like the medium stuff happens so late in the season. It's like she's still processing <laughs> it. Like I think mechanically it's only happened like a day ago. Yeah. So it's like Correct. Yeah, I can see ghosts. Okay, we're gonna deal with this at some point. But you know, I think uh and probably uh, talk to uh, talk to Rosanna about it a bit uh, and Vincent as well. Hmm. It sounds like downtime stuff. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I would pay for a scene between Isabel, Rosanna and Vincent, though. I would, too, actually. Hey, listen, that's the upper tier Patreon stuff, right? Oh my god! <laughs> hey, 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 I'm I'm off the clock. He's like, if anybody's getting paid here, it's me, not the studio. <laughs> it's fair. I actually have a question for both Termite and Aubrey. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, was that the first time that Piper and Isabel have felt the delirium caused by uh, werewolves? Oh, Piper didn't feel shit. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. But um, Isabel. Yeah, that definitely was, because uh, canonically, Isabel is pretty much only dealt with Kindred. How do you think that's gonna that experience is gonna stick with her now? Uh, I think she's gonna try to avoid werewolves. I mean, that's just fair. That's just yeah. smart. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's definitely just like, nope, don't like that. Don't want to do that again. Yeah, that was that was worse than I expected. But Piper does now have a fun little rundown about what would have happened if it did affect her, and she's probably not too keen on being near werewolves. Eh. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that was terrible. Just like, huh, sheer existential horror. Okay, not great. 
Zero out of ten. Cannot recommend. <laughs> Flee. <laughs> like, physically, I can't. I have to run. <laughs> I gotta go. My mom is calling. I guess I'm going forever. Bye. I have, I have a, sorry, I have a thing that day. <laughs> anyone have any other questions for anyone else uh including asking bp what the fuck oh yeah uh yeah. is, is, is well, it uh, that time yeah yeah so uh on three everybody <laughs> 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 One, two, three. Uh, hey, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? 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 How yeah. do you top like a double werewolf fight during a magic ritual as a season finale? How do you top that? I don't want to know how he to... tops that. <laughs> You'll have to wait and see what happens next season. Okay. I... Although now I, I feel like the gauntlet's been put down, so. <laughs> oh, great. Mm. Oh, no. now. My bad, everyone. Sorry. I have until. This is on Arthur. <laughs> until like midway through is. next year to plan. Yep. All right, guys. So uh, we all know going into season three, whatever happens, we blame Arthur. I mean, that's fair. It's, that's it's that's really how this show changed. usually goes. <laughs> nothing has changed. Yeah, that's probably his fault. It's fine. Um. Yeah. No, I I I I have some thoughts of what's coming for next season, so we will see. Also, I'm realizing but I'm obviously that. not gonna. I'm obviously not gonna tell people. Realizing the thing I had planned for the downtime is uh, probably gonna bite me in the ass. Mm. Most is of y'all's downtime stuff is gonna bite you in the ass. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But I'm excited. Uh, mine's gonna bite me in the ass directly. <laughs> as to what you guys want to see next year or ne next season I guess it is technically next year I kind of want to see like taking the logical conclusion of a lot of uh, things from this season like you, you know it's Isabel taking what she has learned to the logical conclusion um, us taking the logical conclusion of fucking up Rin uh, and yes, freeing yes, yes. this uh, Faye uh, uh, but I imagine it's not going to be very easy and we're probably going to make ourselves enemies in the Second Inquisition, which is going to be very interesting for Isabel, um, like sort of as a person and like the choices that she'll oh. have to make. Oh, First Aubrey, time. Aubrey, we're already <laughs> enemies of the Second Inquisition, baby. <laughs> I was going to say some of you are already enemies of the some Second of you Inquisition. Are. Isabel <laughs> isn't. No, 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 no. I don't know where you'd ever get that idea. Yeah, yeah, not <laughs> a clue. Enemies? Definitely not. Definitely not the fact that every time the Second Inquisition came up, uh, Termite would would give the shadiest fucking look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> That yeah, definitely didn't give any hint at all of, of what was happening. Not at all. You didn't share any names, right? You didn't share any names when you talked to that person? No. Okay, good, good. <laughs> no names. <laughs> I mean, I'm down to punch a dinosaur. Can I do that? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, those aren't Where the super fuck natural. did you get a dinosaur from? <laughs> I mean, the Mokole. <laughs> no. No. I'm good. I'm gonna pass on that one. Uh, <laughs> I'd rather the fuck not. Leave the Thank sun breathing you? lizard in the sewer where he belongs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm. I. I. I have so many plans. <laughs> I, I figure listen. You do. There were moments. Um, I, I want to know how worried you guys were during that final fight. Very. Um, very. I I was the first target, and then also I had the, the thought of 
what happens when you kill somebody who's like on the precipice of life and death? Like that, mm. that's probably has some sort of blowback. Rates? Question mm. mark? Um, Listen, every time somebody comes close to death in one of my games, they're like, it's fine, you'll just run Wraith next. And I'll be like, wait a minute. <laughs> Did you plan this? <laughs> uh, I was terrified for Isabel for sure. I uh, got real terrified when I had to dodge things because because Arthur just just tries to counter punch. He doesn't try to dodge. I was like, oh no, oh no, this is gonna go real bad if this keeps up. Oh no. No. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Um no. I'm, I'm just gonna say it right here. I'm so happy that Rosanna had her shield up when she did. Yeah. Because uh because um Briggs would have yep. one shot Rosanna yep. with the, with his attack. Walked over and handed you a new character sheet. Yep. Am I glad that Piper just got shot? <laughs> never thought uh, i'd like, say that but man let me tell you <laughs> literally if if jesse hadn't last second decided to go for the gun instead of isabel isabel yep. prob- might have because it's like i didn't i didn't have a good pool and i was dealing with like uh having all of my stuff split <laughs> yeah i had so here's what's really funny is i had people behind the scenes who were messaging me not the pcs but mm-hmm. but like other people who watch the show who were messaging me and saying that I was giving you guys too many allies and it was mm-hmm. being too nice to you. And I said, man, if y'all no. had any idea what's coming for them, <laughs> like, nope. they need this as bare minimum to deal with the total fucking threat that they've built up around themselves. Also, like, to be fair, that's that's what Hunter is like. Mm-hmm. That's the only way that hunters can fucking survive. Yeah, yeah they have yeah. to have a whole bunch of people back yeah, in the or else they're fucked. The only yeah. way that they have any sort of chance is the fact that there's a dozen of them for every supernatural that exists yep. that they're it's, fighting. It's a curb stomp in the end. It has to be, otherwise everyone dies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like a I, fair fight. There's no such thing as a fair fight between hunters and supernaturals. It's just not that, nope. not how that works. It, it, it quite literally can... Mm, be the difference of who rolls first on initiative. Yep. Yep. It honestly um, is like I I was comparing some things and I was like, man, it really comes down to who punches first, right? Like mm-hmm. if if Briggs hits Arthur before Arthur can hit Briggs, Arthur's probably gone. Mm-hmm. You know, I I I sat down and kind of and and played that combat out like myself. <laughs> where i was i was looking at y'all's dice pools their dice pools and i was rolling and going back and forth and i was just like okay so let's assume that things are all perfect and they make no fucking mistakes which never happens right. um and and y'all lost in most of the simulations i did mm-hmm. I I think not I necessarily think- a tpk but like a, a definite like loss scenario in most mm-hmm. of the situations. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if they the werewolves hadn't been rolling so bad for like that one round, I think we might have lost. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yep. Um, I I was I was surprised that nobody died. I expected at least one character to go down. Mm-hmm. I wasn't mm-hmm. sure who it, it would was... be, but I, I figured at least one one would. Oh, it was going to be usable. That's why I was worried. Yeah, it was the one to go to go to first, and the one that had nothing to do with the initial reason why the werewolves hate you. Well, the exactly. reason why the reason why I didn't know who would go down, um, who who it would be, is because I was not the one making that decision. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. I set things up, and I told Gary and Grizz, I said, "I'm gonna roll for you guys, um, but you guys get to decide what you're doing." Mm-hmm. I'll be honest, I expected for Briggs to just go after Piper from where she was. Uh, hanging would, out and and i think that was his plan i i think i think rosanna um pulling out that card on on jesse mm-hmm. uh is the yeah, only the, reason why piper survived oh yeah yeah, yeah. She would not Dakota card. yeah. so my, my i had two contingencies with that um with that pulling the dakota card i was either going to um shake jesse enough 
for everybody to be able to get a hit on him where he's kind of distracted. Um, or I was going to direct um, Jesse's anger toward, towards Rosanna so she could save Isabel. And that was kind of my what can I do because I don't really have anything going on right now um, to help um, because I had to activate my bow. And so I was like, got it. I'm just going to do this because uh, I either way, I'm buying somebody some time. What I didn't think was going to happen was I bought Piper time to survive and get ready while Briggs attacks Rosanna. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that was cool. Y'all want to know something that uh, Grizz told me? If he had a shot, he was going to go and kill Quiet. Ooh. Ooh. Go for the jugular. Well, that and the, you know, the sniper that has the high caliber silver rounds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, to be fair, they didn't know that he had high caliber silver. No, but he, he's, he did. He did know that he had a high caliber sniper rifle to begin with. And that yep. hurts. No, even, whether, if, even if it's not silver, that's painful. <laughs> Let me tell you what. Let me tell you what. <laughs> um, Qu- Quiet on Overwatch came in fucking clutch. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, yeah. Ro- I rolled for all of the SPCs, and he's the only one who rolled well. H- him, him, and Ophelia. Ophelia also rolled like a god, but. Hmm. Interesting thing to say. <laughs> that was <laughs> genuinely not intentional. Genuinely not intentional. But um, mm-hmm. it's good there, was a, Scott, there was a chance. Arthur. There was a chance that Ophelia, um, that Ophelia rolled poorly, and the and things did not go well. That was always an option. That um, from that, the ritual side of things. Yeah, that combat in itself. Yes, the vi- like the the parts of the werewolves was scary. Um, the one that had me on my toes was the ritual rolls because for a couple of rounds there yeah. we were not doing well on the true. And I was just like, I guess I'm just gonna expend more willpower to see if I can. I've never been so happy job. to not be involved in rolling things. <laughs> and it's <laughs> like this talk That's about, fair. oh yeah, everyone rolls so well in the season finale. I think my rolls were super mm. mid on the season finale. Is okay, either mid like- or just kind of not great. I'm just hanging out yeah. on the side like my part's done. Y'all got this. I mean, to be fair, Aubrey, um, th- th- this was so decidedly not Isabel's thing. Yeah. Um, and like your best option for combat was the thing you didn't pull in until the last fucking round for some reason. I was just like, why isn't she calling Gozer? Why is it? She calling I Gozer? literally did not think about it until that last oh. round where my, my brain like looks at the sheet and just goes that wait, that I dog. <laughs> I have a dog. <laughs> I and because I because as right because as somebody who who has played a hunter who had pets the pets are always better than the hunters it's <laughs> they're true. just yeah. always better the stats are so much better I I did think of Gozer but like I thought of Gozer Arthur would not have thought of Gozer so at no point mm. did I think he would I mention didn't Gozer. Even think of Gozer yeah I it did. was just yeah. like I never never pulled him out before <laughs> so it was like yeah uh it was you know and it. It was just kind of just like, OK, yeah, that's the thing I have now. Yeah, I was yeah, like, I was panicking when... internally for you, but I felt like pointing it out would be too much of a favor. Mm-hmm. So it was just like, I'm just going to sit mm-hmm. here and panic quietly because I think they're all going to die and Gozer's going to be the only member of the cell left. Yeah, it was uh, it was when Arthur got to Jesse that I was like, where's Gozer in all of this? But I was like, Arthur would not say anything because Arthur doesn't think of Gozer. Mm-hmm. I was like, but I was because thinking, where the hell is Gozer? That's because Gozer doesn't think of Arthur. Yep. That's <laughs> virtual. It's but Gozer does think of Arthur, just nothing good. <laughs> <laughs> he does think of Arthur. He thinks poorly of Arthur. Yep. <laughs> oh, this fucking guy again? Jesus. I, I, yeah, no, I, I, I had some serious concerns, especially when, especially when Isabel was not utilizing Gozer. I was just like, he's so good in combat. Why aren't you doing this? And um, there, was, there was like a bit of like, have I like, I know I've spent the points, but like it, the, my brain always goes to thematically and story wise. Does this make sense? Uh, and I sometimes have to shake my brain and be like, no, go mechanic wise, please. Yeah, well, now now that this has happened, now you can lean more into Isabel uh, mm-hmm. utilizing Gozer more, right? Because we had this mm-hmm. we had this fight. Mm-hmm. And then she remembered, wait, 
the dog and then now it's like and then she oh, shot yeah. the fucking dog yeah <laughs> then, oh i only grazed the, the dog it's a little slightly injured he's fine i would have like after i made sure rosanna wasn't gonna bleed out i would have taken care of gozer yeah yeah it's rosanna then you know gozer uh, quiet and patty gozer. tov and gozer right it just uh-huh. like you took care of him and then yeah. maybe piper with the bullet wound <laughs> piper's fine <laughs> I, but my can... head my headcanon is that Arthur did not say anything about the fact that his shoulder was bit until, like, everything calmed down. And I was like, oh, yeah, by the way, I also, like, have a bite on my shoulder. But anyway. <laughs> now, the real question is, does he know enough of werewolves to know that he's not going to become a werewolf? Uh, I mean, so we're playing Fifth Edition, and Fifth Edition explicitly does not say how werewolves are made. Correct, well. Amundo. Mm-hmm. Season so... three, Arthur's a werewolf. <laughs> BP BP will be sitting on that. Um, mm-hmm. Season three, Isabel's a ghoul. <laughs> Actually, there's, no. there's some very there's some very real chances that this ends up as a very different game. If y'all, yep. keep, if y'all keep flirting with the with the supernatural, <laughs> season four we're all just supernatural. Literally, literally, <laughs> Isabel's drive. She is, she is the envy. I know. I know. I yeah. love everything so, about it. And hilariously, I think we would all end up being from different fucking yep. splats. Yep. 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 <laughs> Rosanna's a changeling. Arthur becomes a <laughs> werewolf. Isabel's a vampire. <laughs> and the Piper might be a mage if she ever figures out how to become unallergic to magic. Or make She's magic not allergic less to allergic magic, to her. To magic. She's not allergic magic to magic. Magic is allergic to her. Magic is allergic to her. <laughs> a little bit. This is smidgen. Piper, uh, Piper's part of the technocracy. Don't oh, you me. put that evil on me. <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not surrounding but... yourself with tech. Art, isn't there a tradition that like is all about technology too? Yeah, the, the tech yeah. adapts, but the thing is, the technocracy or the whole like it's not magic; it's just super science. It's definitely magic, though. Yeah, but it, but their stuff is still magic, so Piper still literally couldn't do it. It's fair. What's technocracy is the one who made the world round? Uh, I, don't know, I remember oh. reading some really <laughs> old, like obscure thing that it was just a whole bunch of mages that got together and said, you know what? The, the earth isn't flat. It's round. And it just like popped into a sphere. Sounds like a mage thing to do. Yeah, that's a very mage thing to do. <laughs> what if it was a ball? What if it was ball? <laughs> So I'm curious. Oh boy, because everybody was so scared during that final fight and so stressed Mm -hmm. out and worried. Um, And I know my players well enough to know that every single one of you was thinking about a potential backup character. Um, What were your thoughts? I actually did not think of a backup character. However, if you're asking me, I did not have any ideas. If you want me to think of one now, Katie Lynn, the hunter. <laughs> I couldn't play her well enough. I couldn't play her well enough. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I couldn't play her well enough. Um, I would probably be playing character maybe more lean on. Um, it would probably be physical first, like mental second. Um, I had a, a fun concept that I, I'd been like, just been sitting and I'm like, I want to do something with this. Uh, the concept would be personal, in quotes, black market, shopper. Mm. Oh god. Oh lord. Mm. Wow. Phenomenal. I actually started a sheet um when I got that first hit because like I said I was convinced Rosanna was dying that that um that session so i had actually started kind of toying around with a backup character um and um i was making her i i had her set up to be a marshal um <laughs> tell me uh scott tell me if this sounds familiar to you at all um oh no yes. <laughs> i know ex- i know what's coming <laughs> ex ex military mm-hmm. but only dealt in explosives <laughs> Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Uh, or guns um mm-hmm. 
but I I had started to I had started to make this to kind of like remake this Marshall that I had made for a game that Scott ran. Um, my idea with her was um physical, social, then mental. <laughs> you um, have to. You'd have to use a different name that you can just pull in. Oh, yeah, no, no, because... no, I know, I know. It would no, be confusing. I, it would um, be. She was definitely built a little bit better than Ophelia because Ophelia in your game was my first time ever messing with them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With something sure. that wasn't either an Inquisitive or an Underground. Yeah. Um. So, I yeah, I had gotten about halfway done with that sheet when, uh, when Briggs um ran away from Rosie. <laughs> I was like, okay. Um if the werewolves had just focused one person, it would be a mm. different story. Yeah, also, can I can I just say I fucking love the image of Briggs throwing the uh the spider drone just for it to stand up and then fucking shoot him. <laughs> right? That was a, it was a great <laughs> mental image. <laughs> or I just kind of saw him like skidding in I... the ground and then just like just, like coming to a stop and then bang ah! <laughs> yeah this what is I, what I, comes out. what I loved is that he threw it towards Isabel and then chased and then it like chased he was it. playing fetch like, with himself yeah. oh my god I thought you wanted to get this thing away from you why are you running towards it <laughs> it was a great moment I was just like oh that's so funny Jesse with the dog food. What are you, a werewolf? Yeah, I was like, that's, I actually have that as a clip uh, with all caps, it, with uh, asterisks, foreshadowing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like at that same point, it was, I also saw like in the chat, it was just like, Jesse's my favorite. I'm like, oh, that's a mistake. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's doing it wrong. Just kidding, because I was the one that said it. That's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. I was like, Jesse's my favorite. Uh, BP, yeah. are there any moments in the campaign that you look back on and thought, think you would do differently or would have done differently or like in a similar type of situation in the future? Just, uh, a, just a question. Um, I felt very scattered at the beginning of the finale. Um, I had a lot of mechanics and, and I think in the future I would probably attempt to, um, write out the, the player specific mechanics so that I could like copy paste them to you guys. So there is less table talk about it. Um, you know, where I, I'll give like a brief overview vote verbally so that, so that people who are listening understand what's happening. Um, but then like, in the PC chat, there would just be like a copy of, you know, spend X amount of willpower for this and X, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, mm-hmm. um, I, I think the one thing I have found with the fifth edition games is that willpower um, frequently becomes like the difference between um, a, 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 role that just passes and a role that passes with full flying colors. So I've been trying to find ways to give it other mechanical uses so that it's not so much of a crutch anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I feel like there aren't enough, um, there frequently aren't enough um, uh, consequences um, because you always have that option to go back and reroll. You know, it's pretty rare that you reroll and it's still a failure. Um, I mean, I'm so, taking my dice luck. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing: is that I, I, from what I have found, even with you throughout the season, it was much more rare that you just straight up failed something. That's um, fair. you know, when you were doing the things that Isabel was meant to do, you always rolled incredibly well. Um, you know, and so it got to the point where I was just like, it shouldn't be that the only time a character ever fails is when they're doing something they're bad at. Um, there should be some times that a character just stumbles when they're doing the thing that they're good at, or their role is just mediocre and that's okay. You know what I mean? Um, so I've been trying to find ways to utilize willpower 
um, and to kind of tie it up with other things to show that you can't just burn this resource over and over and over again for rerolls. Um, and that's not something I would do again. That's just something or, like that's not something that I think I did poorly and would do again. It's just something that I think in the future I will probably make it a point to try mm -hmm. to use more. If that mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, and I, I probably could have balanced the use of it a little bit better in that final fight. I think I could have made it um, a little. I, I think I could have upped the ante a little bit because like nobody ever chose to just spend two, you know, the, the two um, in order to do I both did. of their checks full. Oh, well, yeah. Well, it was I, so, aggravated to do the full. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean, I, mean, I didn't mean the two. I meant the I meant the aggravated. Um, yeah. And yeah, so, unfortunately, so I, aggravated build powers. I, 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 th I think I, I would have, I think I should have made the negative um, to each roll bigger. Yes. yes. So that you actually had to grapple with that. Um, yeah. Because. Uh, well, uh, sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say that, like, for me, deciding between just minusing one was fine because I got one from, uh, from, from uh, Piper. So I didn't worry about it too much when I minus one again. So I just had the regular mm -hmm. pool. I'd be rolling. So, uh, but I did, I did do the aggravated damage to make sure we finished. I did do that. Well, you, I guess, yeah, you did end up taking one because your the rollover yeah. took you yeah. over. Yeah. Yep. Right. I, I just mean, you know, I, I think I should have made the negatives to each roll bigger. Um, yes. So that yeah. you guys actually had to grapple with, is it worth burning an aggravated willpower? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for um, sure. I thought either way it was an interesting mechanic to throw into the mix yeah. and make you guys sort of yeah. like really look at your at your resource management. <laughs> yeah, no, it did because because, uh, yeah, like I said, it was like I got one from Piper. So that pool just went back to normal. And then Arthur has a big enough pool on the other things that I was trying to do that it was like, well, my, minus one is fine. Um. I was like, I did have the debate with myself, though, on whether, like, two successes was worth it. And that's why I did it at the very end when we needed, like, one more. And I was like, I'm just going to do it. Right. Yeah, because well, we, we needed mm -hmm. one more and didn't want to risk not rolling yeah. any more successes. Correct. I didn't want to use a willpower and then it come out as just a bunch of zeros anyway. I was like, okay. Um, yeah. I'm just going to do it. So it was a thing I did. I did think about it the way you wanted me to but only up only at that point. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean outside of that I I think I think I'm I'm pretty happy with how I with how I did everything. I was um I tried to make it a point to um use this as an opportunity to try and force Arthur to undergo some character growth. <laughs> um while because I don't feel like just addressing backstory is enough, right? Like you've got to take the the key parts of what makes a character flawed and, and play with it. Um, and and I think the biggest issue I had with Arthur as a character was the fact that he lives on so, like on the extremes all the time, which makes him incredibly hard to like. Nudge story wise. Um, like, I always know how Arthur's going to react to things. If he meets somebody new, he's automatically going to be suspicious. And if it's supernatural, he's automatically going to want to kill it. And I was just like, <laughs> we've got to put him in a position where that's just not an option. Like, he can be suspicious all he wants, but he's got to, like, understand that there has to be a happy medium. There has to be, or things are going to go poorly. And that was supposed to be the lesson. Now... If he walks away from that final fight and the fact that Jesse and Briggs were werewolves thinking, no, I was always right. We're always going to go to the extreme that he's failed to learn the lesson. <laughs> that was supposed to be a, you know, like Vincent was supposed to be a um, not all fights need to happen. Nope. Sometimes you save fighting. more lives by not fighting. Um and then the final fight was supposed to be, but also it's good to be cautious, if that makes sense. Sure. Um, you know, and to present the fact that sometimes hunting isn't just killing things. Sometimes hunting is, is solving the problem in, you know, that his big bad was 
somebody that he probably couldn't kill if he wanted to. And even if we succeeded, somebody that would probably just tear the fucking world apart when we killed them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess one thing we've learned is uh, we're always going to make anybody we don't know eat with silver cutlery. <laughs> no, I, I mean, it's 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 not really I mean, it's not really a spoiler because this is a character, but uh, uh, the situation that actually the the journal entry I wrote afterwards, Arthur didn't doesn't think about the fact that I mean, he does kind of think about the fact that Briggs and Jesse were like betrayal. But he was watching more of how Isabel was trying to help people, how the MC, like in spite of all of the crazy that was happening, was still standing with us. And he's actually thinking in a different way right now than, Holy than shit. the fact that he was betrayed. Yeah. Character there, growth. Yay. There is character growth. Yeah. No. Character growth. It, it is a thing. Yeah. And later on, him and Vincent have a buddy cop moment. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that might be going would, a little too far. Go that far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny that's though. Still, still a couple seasons down the road, it's all. Now, now, will will there ever be a time when Arthur and Vincent sit across from a, a table from each other and try to just have a conversation? And not immediately try to kill each other? Maybe. What Maybe. are your intentions with my cellmate? Oh my exactly. god. Exactly. Oh fucking no. Oh my go. god. <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs> Listen, we're gonna have a talk there, Vincent, buddy. Have her uh, back right. Listen, if anybody is going to have that conversation, it's going to be Tov. <laughs> yeah. Not Patty? No. Mm. You trust trust me. Um, Tov, Tov is the scarier one. Um, Patty would be the one to take uh, to take Isabel out while that conversation conversation mm. was happening. He'd be like, let's go to a movie and not tell her what's about to happen. Oh, so that'd be great because then Tov could be having this conversation, or Arthur just be standing behind him, being like, "Mm-hmm, mm-hmm." mm-hmm. No, that's not. gonna be a that's gonna be a fun conversation for everyone involved. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I hope it happens. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, uh, does anyone have anything else they'd like to go ahead and ask or comment on? Um, I would like to ask Solomon. Oh, no. If yeah. you could introduce and I I know that this is this is not going to be the easiest question to ask because I've used Wayfair to introduce as many splats as I can to HHS's wider universe. Of course. Um, But if you could pick any splat for the next season to focus on, what would it be? Oh, Lord. Um... I feel like this is a, a fish for some brainstorming ideas. Oh no, yeah, I've I, I've already got I've already got I'm like at kidding. least at least one, if not two, seasons planned out. Yeah, Ooh. next season is just gonna focus on. Um. Okay. As much as I know that it's incredibly problematic, I oh, don't no. really like the ideas behind the demon the fallen I, if only it was more like religious religion agnostic and more just like these are ancient beings from creation as opposed to like they served god it's just they they were there when it all started and they're here now because <laughs> mm. if only just because that i like the like more eldritch vibes of demon the fallen if you ignore the whole abrahamic religion stuff in it which is most of it but you can try to uh do basically surgery to it to make it more just like uh agnostic of religion i could if only just because i really like the ideas of ancient beings who might be benevolent might not be after times in the abyss that kind of thing i get that i don't know i think i'd like to see geist the sin eater yeah, but yeah, that's but that's new world. Yeah, Geist we'll is a world of that. darkness. That's that's yeah. that's, that's, that's new world. That's, 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 yeah. that's the onyx path, Steph. We that's don't very true. Right here. If so, what you're thinking, what you're wanting is wraith. Yeah, which we've already done. It's fair. Yeah. I punched a ghost. Wait. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess that could be like the next question: is is what would y'all's next uh, game splat? What 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 would you like to see to see run next? 
Um, I want to see either a changeling game. Of course. Um, oh, I, I've changeling is on my bucket list of things that I want to play. Um, I, I actually want to play it for real, too. But, you know, I, I, I want to do that for basically all the World of Darkness stuff, except for Mummy, because that's just stupid. Well, I was going to say, know, no, I'm just kidding. I, I really, I really want a mage game. Uh, and if y'all tune in. <laughs> Perfect opportunity. Shameless plug. Anyway. Shameless plug on our own Patreon content. <laughs> uh, we're like the buildings that have advertisements only for their own store. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, but I want to see Changeling. Um, I do want a I'd, Changeling game. I'd love to see a, a Vampire Dark Ages game. Yeah, it, it would probably be my answer too. Is like a Dark Ages vampire or werewolf. I personally would fucking love to see the uh, Wild West werewolf. I thought I know that it's real stupid, but I like things that are real stupid. What I love is that every single one of the splats that Legacy has brought up are ones that I've talked about running. <laughs> every fucking one of them. Yep. But I've also been told no. You've been banned from running for at I'm, least the next year. I'm not allowed to plan anymore until one of my current shows ends. Listen, I do it for your mental health, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying. You're like I want all of these things that you have, that you have talked I am, about. I am patient also... and willing to wait. <laughs> um. Uh. Uh. Am I supposed um, to add uh, to this? Because yeah. I. Uh, yeah. Cause, tell, tell us. Because 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 Hunter is my favorite. So like I'm. You good. just want more Hunter. <laughs> I just want more Hunter. Like Hunter. <laughs> Hunter's my favorite. Mm. Another thing I actually kind of would like to see is more stuff that kind of focuses on the lower end from the world of darkness, like the psychics and sorcerers. Oh, like they don't have yeah. to all be like really hard hitting reality warpers or like all that other shit. Sometimes it's just kind of fun to have people who are a little bit better than regular people doing cool shit. Yeah, well, if you want to see a show on psychics, uh, why yeah. don't you go watch some? <laughs> don't you go watch Chicago Reborn? Whoa, it's technically what? about psychics. <laughs> yeah, a show about psychics for you know the first episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I have actually been kind of toying around with running a game based solely on on being like psychics um because it was such a fun thing that i got to look into for like um when when we were first creating um hhs um like slightly above the average person like you're able to do a little bit but you're nowhere near the power of like a mage or like a vampire (laughs) which are kind of like the bottom tier of the supernatural food chain. Like you're, you're, you, yeah, you've vampires got enough. have the lowest floor. <laughs> yeah. Lowest. Mm-hmm. You have just enough to be above a neonate. Of the supernaturals, vampires have like the lowest <laughs> floor. Yeah. yeah. But they also have one of the higher ceilings, which is, real weird it is yeah mm-hmm. yeah i mean if we could throw in some some call of cthulhu eldritch horrors that'd be cool but not in the hunter game that'd be terrible don't do that yeah don't do that <laughs> don't do that in the hunter game please oh please don't. Scott, Scott, don't don't no, make me no, want to write no, no comment oh Ooh. don't make me want to write a call of cthulhu game for hhs I Don't mean, make me do it. I mean, I'm down. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> he who writes Call of Cthulhu Adventures for money. Yeah, I'm down.
All right. If that is all anyone's got left to, to comment on or ask about, I think that's a good place to wrap up. So I would like to thank everyone for listening in. These episodes are dropped Thursdays at noon for the $5 plus tier. They're released to the public a month later. So think about subscribing so you can keep up to date with your talk news for Hollow Haven Studios. I'm Sol. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.